Mine, beloved friends and families, brothers and sisters, your friend, your brother, me, Haji Dr. Roshan Khan, in the raw, RKU's guy in the free media, and I'm doing a talk, recording, reading, commenting. The front page of today's uh, Tuesday Kaicho News, Guyana will be stuck in a never-ending stream of payments. Christopher Ram. You know, when men like Christopher Ram writes, people like myself will usually sit back, think, and consider the, the points he is writing on and to try to get the message out to so many people who are missing the point. My grandson and, 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 and Atlas is coming here to disturb me. Atlas, go. Atlas, go. Come on, go, 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 go. Yes, here he is. I'd like to call him Mr. Hansel. Right, there he is. There he is. That's my first grandson. See him? Come. Good boy. Nice. Behave yourself. He wants attention. And the deer now are building a little something there for the children, a jungle gym, so to say. Swing and slide for my other grandchildren who will appreciate that. Right. Anyhow, back to the point. So the article is Guyana will be stuck. In a never-ending stream of payments, Christopher Ram and uh, 20 billion owed to Exxon by 2025. So what is happening is, you know, we wonder whether what we are in, think that we will enjoy in the oil and gas discovery, whether it will be mostly what is called the a pyrrhic victory. A pyrrhic victory is a victory that is um, a useless victory. You think you have won, but in reality you have lost, or you have gained nothing in this victory. So this whole oil thing that we are all excited about, which will push up some cash flow, and which will raise some standards of living for a while, but in the end, our generations into the future, if we're not careful, will have to pay. If we plant coconut trees and tremendous amount of coconut trees all over, if we take over all the guys' so-called lands and produce coconut, we'll be making more money for our country and developing our people more than the oil that we'll get under the ground, and the oil above the ground, which is coconut oil will be much more profitable and realistic and will give us profits upon profits. Anyhow, they're trying with that. I'm hoping that our politicians will realize what they're doing and will think about the reality and the facts and try to save us pain and suffering. One of the things about Lyndon Forbes Samson Burnham is that when people were coming and we couldn't get 50 or 51 percent, he will tell them, leave them right there in the ground. To me, if we can't get 50 percent, and they are the investors, they have to spend the money, we should not, as a people and a poor country, have to refund them if they suffered a loss or if they dig a dry well and for them to eat their food and drink and enjoy and live their big life. And we taxpayer dollars have to finance them. Something is not right. I don't understand this system of capitalism, and I, it is my hope that the government will realize. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is in the raw, so we'll have some distortion. There's no editing. And reality, and my advice to you is to send this to your friends and families. Remember, we are on YouTube, Archie's Guy in the Free Media. We are on Facebook, Archie's Guy in the Free Media. And including my own, and we are also on link on medium.com, a blog. So let me see what Christopher Ram here is saying. An intellectual, a brilliant, a good, and a powerful gentleman.
Over the weekend, Kaicho News had reported that by the year 2025, Guyana will have owed some 20 billion to ExxonMobil and its partners in the Stobrook block. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking of, ladies and gentlemen? What Guyana Goldfield did to us. So now we are reading that another foreign company just made a huge gold discovery. How we get nothing out of it other than uh, next to nothing, they might set up their own airfield and they will export our gold out illegally at times, as was done with other major companies, some of whom are on your, on, on your tongue tips, right? Which is on your tongue tips, the name of the company, I don't want to call it now. And they poison till today all the waters in that region, that the fish that the Amerindian or the original people used to consume for millions of years cannot be consumed anymore because it has cyanide inside. Can we imagine this? We're allowing these people to come, take out our wealth, destroy our water. So this company now also will end up destroying our waters, taking our wealth, and like Guyana Goldfields, most likely say they're not finding any gold and decide to sell to some Chinese company which they refer to as scavenger companies. They're different kind. They're good Chinese company, great companies. But they're also scavenger companies who scrape everything out for themselves. Guyana Goldfields took back to Canada $200 million after putting up a few tents. And what happened? They pay taxes in that country, but they pay no taxes in Guyana. So this is something that we have to worry and ponder about when you are from a poor country, what these people will and are doing to us. Back to the article. This is because the country has uh, agreed to fully reimburse these oil majors for the amount of money it took them to take the oil out of the ground and for the drilling, transportation, shipping, which is totally ridiculous. We need to re-look re at those things. How we can plan to reimburse them fully everything they take out from the ground? Transport, food, eat, drink. Uh, and we will end up, re and if they get a dry well, we will, we will reimburse them. Who did that contract? Who signed that contract? I know Trotman is a man who was highly involved in these things. And he never read the, the documents which he admitted to that he never read. Because of the unfavorable contract terms that the leaders have signed on to Guyana will be stuck in a never-ending stream of payments before it can even begin to reap any benefits from the oil industry. <laughs> so I don't know what is wrong with our politicians, uh, with, with the Fed, or they were drunk, or the dung right lacking in their sense. Uh, back to the article. These are the damning comments of transparency advocate, chartered accountant, and attorney at law, Christopher Ram. Ram was at the time responding to a question during his brief appearance on the Kaichor radio program, the Glen Lal Show, Hell, Tell It As It Is, hosted last Sunday. The lawyer reminded that even as the country seeks to pay off the billions of unaudited costs on the Starbrook, Block Exxon Mobil will continue to submit to the government further and higher bills on each of the licenses. So we have no way to check it. We don't have the capacity, the ability, the manpower. And they keep on sending bills to us, which we should send back to them because they want oil. They want to make money. They are making the 98% and we are getting a little bit of next to nothing. What a disgrace and a shame to us. I would prefer to leave it right there where it was and let us continue to live the way we used to live, which was not bad. We were still surviving. We were still making ends meet. We were still developing. At least in the time of the, the previous administration, not, I'm not talking about APNO AFC, they took us down. But the one before that, which was the PPPC, especially under Dr. Barachak Deus, power and reign. All of these costs that we'll that we will have to bear, there is almost zero risk in petroleum when it comes to Guyana, and yet we are paying all of these monies. And then also, ladies and gentlemen, we are paying all these money, he's saying. But then better yet, more so, is that it costs less to process our oil. 
because we have what is called sweet crude, unlike Venezuela and Trinidad. So this is the disgrace. I don't understand what is happening here. I would say shut them down and send them home at this time. Or let us renegotiate. And we don't re whatever they spend, we do not have to repay anything. Rom went further to express his bitter disappointment towards the People's Progressive Party civic administration, which, according to him, has shown a lack of willingness and courage in dealing with what is clearly an injustice and immoral arrangement. It is an immoral arrangement. But let us remember the PPPC inherited this from the APNU. But I think also the PPPC new government president and vice president and prime minister could put heavy pressure on them to renegotiate and to follow even little Suriname with less oil, less population, was under dictatorship for how many years, 12 years or, a, or, or, or two decades, military, and yet still they, they, they got a better deal, making us look downright brain dead, if you ask me. So I'm going to ask the government to please look at all of these things. The attorney at law is a dominant that every time Exxon Mobil spends something leading to a discovery, it will be bad news for Guyana, since it is the country that will have to foot every bill precisely. And every time they pay a house rent, or buy a roll of toilet paper, or eat fancy in some restaurant, or have a, a maid, or they travel in American Airlines up and down, we have to foot the bill, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm not too excited anymore about this oil. I'm sad. I'm depressed because we have to take our tax dollars that we are earning at, we're earning at this time and pay ExxonMobil. According to Tom Sanzillo, Director of Finance under the Institute of Energy, Economics and Financial Analysis, IEEFA, the basic problem is that when the Stubbrook block project was being planned, most analysts were looking at the oil prices around the world between 60 and $65 per barrel and upward. Right now, the expert noted that these oil prices are hovering around $40 a barrel as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. San Zillow said it is unlikely that between now and the next five years, it will go over US $50 if it goes that high. End of article. But that is the pain and the whatever we have to worry about, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, brothers and sisters. These guys are here to get rich off of us, and we, the Guyanese people, have to suffer. Your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Rushin Khan, in the raw, our case, Guyana Free Media, today, Tuesday, November 17, 2020. And share this, please, to your friends and families.